My name is Roti Miolale. I work as the Executive Director of Youth Hub Africa. Youth Hub Africa is a non-profit uh, based in Nigeria that works to work on a number of key issues, one of which is on uh, girls' education, uh, girls' access to education. And we do that by advocating for change in laws and legislation that encourages girls and ensure that girls go to school and complete 12 years of basic quality education. We're currently working on uh, uh, pushing for the passage of the Child Rights Bill into law in uh, four states in northern Nigeria, in Sokoto, Kano, Kebi, and Kaduna State. Uh, very recently, the Kaduna State has signed the Child Rights Bill, which is known as the Child Welfare and Protection Bill, uh, into law. Well, the Universal Basic Education uh, Bill was first enacted in 2004, and it was premised on the fact that uh, education is a right and that all children in Nigeria must have access to free compulsory and basic education for the first nine years of schooling, which covers the first six years of primary education and then uh, the three years of junior secondary education. And with the UBE law also comes the UBE uh, financing, which then provides for uh, funds to support state government uh, to ensure that they can guarantee access, free access and quality education uh, for children for the first nine years of schooling. And over the past um, um, 14 years, since 2040 data the UB has yeah. run, we had seen some, initially some improvements, but we've also in recent times seen setbacks. One of the setbacks is that Nigeria currently has the highest number of out-of-school children uh, in the world, and that is something that is, is alarming. We have over 10 million uh, children out of school in Nigeria, which is uh, more than the population of Denmark and Botswana put together. And so we need to work to ensure that our boys and girls have access to education, and we need to ensure that we look at how universal basic education is tweaked to ensure that the initial um, purpose by which it was set up is met. On the other hand also, we have currently a system whereby funds have been allocated to the universal basic education uh, fund but it has not been used. Uh, as, at, um, as at July 2018, uh, in, in response to a Freedom of Information uh, request that we filed to the Universal Basic Education Commission in Abuja, we were made to realize that there are currently about 82 billion on access funds trapped in the Universal Basic Education Fund that has not been accessed by state government. And so when we began to investigate why is this so, we realized that States are not meeting up to the commitments that they said they would meet up to. The Vasa Basic Education Fund is established in such a way that for you to access funds as a state, um, you need to match whatever resources the federal government is giving to you 50%. So if I have 100 million to give to, let's say, uh, a kitty state, a kitty state needs to bring an extra 100 million to match that and then develop its own work plan to say, this is how we're going to spend 200 million to promote um, access to education in our state. And this has not been happening. Uh, we, we, we found out that many states just want to collect the money and, and use it for whatever purpose that they want to use it for. So on one hand, we have high number of out of school children. On the other hand, we have uh, funding that is trapped, that is not used. And that's what necessitates the call for the amendment of the universal basic education. Thirdly also, you, you recall that uh, at the United Nations in 2015, uh, our governments joined other governments of the world to sign on to the Sustainable Development Goals. And one of the unique things about the Sustainable Development Goals is, is that it, it realizes that um, providing free education up to junior secondary school is no longer enough to guarantee uh, significant changes in the life of children. And so one of the key goals of the, you know, of the Sustainable Development Goal is to move uh, free and basic quality education to 12 years, uh, to 12 years as against nine years. And so one of the key things we are seeking in the UB amendment is to ensure that as against nine years, uh, kids in Nigeria cannot get 12 years of free basic and quality education. But there, there are a couple of um, amendment bills that have been targeted as at the universal basic education. Um, at the Senate, we have one of such bills uh, passed, uh, which is the one that seeks to move um, increase the number of years covered in universal basic education from 9 to 12 years. At the House of Reps, this has not passed. Uh, there have been several stages. It has passed first reading. It has gone to committee stage. Uh, there's been a public hearing. Uh, the committee has gone on the retreats to look at uh, various provisions. We've had a coalition of civil society come together to make uh, specific suggestions on how 
uh, this, uh, this can be amended. Uh, but we're doing a race against time. Uh, as you know, elections are around the corner in Nigeria. Uh, the National Assembly is currently on recess. Uh, most recently, they postponed that by another uh, couple of uh, days uh, to resume. And so while we're on the race against time, we're wondering and working assiduously to ensure that the Universal Basic Education Amendment Bill at the House of Rep is passed. And as you know, if it's passed, then both chambers of the National Assembly needs to harmonize. Uh, a final copy needs to be prepared and sent to the president for assent. And we are hoping that as we continue to work, this would be done before um, the end of this administration in May 2019. Key stakeholders are concerned that Nigeria, should ha Nigeria has one of the highest number of out-of-school children in, in, uh, in the world. Um, we, we are definitely not a poor country. Uh, we have resources allocated to education that is trapped in the universal basic education financing and we then need to be able to muster the political will to ensure that these resources are located and are, that kids go to school and get a decent education. And we're not just talking about any education, it's not just about ticking the boxes, building uh, new classrooms and sending kids to school and at the end of nine years or twelve years they cannot even write their names. We want our kids to go to public school and earn a decent living. I, I, growing up, I benefited from a combination of both public and private, uh, private schools and it's about those foundational education that helps to lay a, a good foundation for people to excel in life and that's the kind of things that uh, civil society is pushing for in this UBI amendment bill uh, that as against nine years poverty rate in Nigeria is very high if 12 years of free basic quality education is guaranteed for kids in Nigeria it will go a long way to lay a proper foundation for them. The also, other thing is also to look at the financing. How can we ensure that we unlock the resources that is currently trapped in universal basic education so that states can access these resources and they can use it where it is most, uh, where it is most needed. This is the current thinking uh, that civil society uh, is looking at as regards to the UBE amendment bill. With the passage of the Universal Basic Education Amendment Bill, more than 10 million out-of-school children in Nigeria would benefit. Currently, they are out of school, and the amendment to that bill will ensure that they get access to education and more financing for states to ensure that they push 12 years of basic quality education for these kids. I call on the Federal House of Representatives, led by Honorable Yakubu Dogara, to make this happen before the um, end of this administration.